But Antony uh, Trenchev joins us now, co-founder and managing partner at Nexo. Antony, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Look, I make no bones about it. I know very little about crypto, so that's why I pour over what you have to say. Tell me and my viewers here just why, in the first answer if you can, this Ether merger is so exciting and potentially supporting the price. Right. Well, think of it as a great software update to let's say your phone, we're going to move off proof of work, which is a very energy intensive and computer power intensive process of verifying transactions to moving to proof of stake, which is a new mechanism, uh, which will bring down prices, make everything faster. And, uh, you know, it ties in very nicely with the overarching team of investing, uh, investing, you know, eco-friendly ESG. And this has been one of the big critics, uh, uh, critiques for crypto that is very uh, uh, energy intensive, and this is bound to change. And hence, we're seeing that huge rally that uh, you refer to. That's really interesting. So it addresses a lot of those concerns about making it a, a useful means of exchange and perhaps a, a longer term asset as well. But, but, the, but just go back to one of my original concerns about crypto from years back now. And that is, surely if you have price stability, it becomes a better, more usable means of exchange, an alternative to traditional currencies as well. Is, are we going to get stability in the prices or actually do you expect more violence in the price thereafter? Well, over the long term, uh, the trajectory of volatility is down. Yes, we see violent moves every now and then, but you know this is what gets us excited about crypto. I think ultimately things will calm down, and then you're going to see great things that are already being built out on top of networks such as Ethereum, you know, decentralized finance for all its nascency. It has great promises. Some of the longer term protocols that have been around have allowed for great yield generation, which in the low interest environments of the past decade, 15 years, uh, has been uh, very exciting. The metaverse, which is coming slightly slower than us crypto folks would have it. There are great things to be built upon the existing network and this shift to the proof of stake is going to make it even easier and more efficient to do so. Anthony, my, my question is, is to what extent this is already priced in though at the moment? Because um, everybody in your industry knew it was coming. They've been excited about it for a very long time. Um, why hasn't the market already priced this in? Well, that's the million dollar question. I personally went long Ethereum around 1,300. I was considering whether it's going to be a buy the room or sell the news type of event. I decided against it, still holding on to it, even though it went above 2,000, which was my initial goal. So we will have to wait out and see, but uh, it really depends on uh, uh, how quickly the network, the new network picks up customers and transactions because then it becomes a positive feedback loop where it could go much higher. And you know, one of the other benefits we didn't talk about is the fact that this change makes Ethereum less inflationary, which in an environment where we have the Fed, which is anything but less uh, in, uh, inflationary, is a great tool uh, and an asset to allocate a portion of your funds off. But just Thank explain you. to us, uh, you hinted at something there, which I think it's worth us just um, uh, unwrapping for the audience who may not be as knowledgeable as you are. Isn't there effectively some form of gating of Ethereum after the merge takes place? My, my understanding, limited as it is, was that for some six months afterwards, there will be some restrictions on access to Ethereum. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that and why that might be making some people nervous as we look as though we may be heading into a global economic slowdown? Well, this goes in two directions. First of all, it is the concentration, the whales, which, you know, one of the uh, theories is that they will con uh, control large uh, portions of the network. This is, by the way, true for the mining mechanism that we have right now in place. But, and obviously there have to be protection mechanisms when we are in uncharted territory with new technology uh, to protect investors. But ultimately, I think it will all pan out uh, as intended. And these are not worries that uh, one should be concerned with, but uh, the longer term items that we talked about, you know, the metaverse, the DeFi, the efficiency, the, the, uh, the energy efficiency, this will uh, uh, result in a boost uh, for, for, for the demand for Ethereum and ultimately be good for pricing.
Um, okay, so Ethereum will make it. You've made that very clear. Uh, a handful of the others will make it. That's that's great for you know the consolidation of this sector and indeed for clarity in the sector. What about the other 20,000 cryptocurrencies out there? I presume you welcome the failure of, of the vast majority of them so this can consolidate the sector around the, the real winners. Well, I'm not rooting for everyone's failure, you know. This ultimately results in the retail getting burned and then the smaller guys. So my hearts do go out to some of the victims of some of the projects. But do we need 20,000 different cryptocurrencies? We certainly do not. Is this something specific to the crypto se uh, 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 sector? It is not. 95, 98% of all startups fail, and that's true regardless the industry. You know, I tend to stick with the big guys and the big crypto uh, uh, currencies that uh, have proven their merit, that have uh, economics and tokenomics that make sense. There's a bunch of them, but uh, you know, there also is the potential for outsized returns within some of the smaller caps. So, you know, it's all about risk management and properly allocating just a fraction, just getting off zero on your crypto exposure, because over the past decade, these assets have shown a remarkable performance and an uncorrect color. Uh, uh, correlated way uh, uh, to the other financial assets, which is great. I know, I take your point on board uh, heartily and in the, in the spirit it's meant to. Just to explain to me one thing though, we're always trying to interpret moves. Sometimes we're good at interpreting beforehand, sometimes we fill in the gaps afterwards with what people tell us in the market. Why did Bitcoin fall in the last week from 24,500 violently, actually it was about 23,500 when it fell, down to 21? What was the reason for that violence? Because I think our viewers who are trading this as an investment rather than punting it as a day trade, they kind of like to know why the big moves happen. Two things, uh, in my opinion. First of all, we had a very sharp uh, rally from the lows, uh, you know, 60, 70 percent, even above 100 percent in something like Ethereum. Anything that moves that rapidly is allowed a 20 uh, percent uh, correction. These are volatile assets, so just profit taking, uh, you know, after such a run up. And then secondly, you know, I think this all ultimately all our destiny depends on what the great people at the Federal Reserve will uh, uh, be talking about Jackson Hole. And there has been sort of perhaps over optimism of whether the narrative is now becoming slightly more dovish. Turns out it should uh, remain hawkish for the foreseeable future. To me, it's a mystery why we clinch into every word uh, that the same guys that last year told us about inflation, that it's transitory and we're not even feeling it and we all get it wrong. Why we continue listening uh, uh, to them and uh, this determining our moves, but it is what it is. So I know where I'll be on Friday, 3 p.m. watching what the Fed officials will say and this will tell us what Sorry, uh, the Anthony. market will do next. The whole point, though, of cryptos is to enfranchise individuals, to, to leave the shackles of traditional central banks and traditional currencies. So one of the two reasons why you're telling me that we've moved so violently is because of the old world still affecting very aggressively this new brave world. That, that's a bit of a failure uh, for Bitcoin and the other currencies, cryptos, isn't it? The fact that they are still tethered, if I can use that word, tethered uh, to the words uh, of the old world. Steve, Jeff, we're talking about the short term here and there is volatility and there is a correlation to traditional risk on assets and, you know, we are the whims of the, of the Fed uh, short term, but then you take the long term and you see that there is very little correlation whether you take it the three year, five year, 10 year, crypto and particularly Bitcoin is uncorrelated. So it has a place in everybody's portfolio. Obviously, don't put your kids' college funds in it. But at the same time, on a single percentage allocation, I quote you there, Jones, it cannot go wrong over the long run. Um, Anthony, those are your opinions, of course, um, and we don't give investment advice. Anthony Trenchev, co-founder and managing partner at Nexo. Uh